Today I'm showing you guys the most essential tips that you need to know when you're using the FL Studio Mixer. Starting off, when you're looking at the mixer all the way to the left here, this is the master. This is the final output of what we hear in our song. And each of these to the right here, these are our individual inserts. This is where we put our individual sounds that we have in our beat. And all of these individual inserts here, all of these sounds, they all get sent to our master. That's what this little green rope here is at the bottom. You guys can see as I go from insert to insert, every single one of these inserts has this little green rope at the bottom and it's all being routed to the master. And again, the master is what we actually hear. That's what's gonna be coming out of our speakers. You can do some pretty unique stuff with this feature using this little rope down here, but I'm gonna cover that later on in the video. In terms of which sound is getting sent to which insert here, that's our choice. We get to choose that from the channel rack here. For example here, looking at hi-hat number one, this is getting sent to channel four. But if I want to change that, if I want to send it to channel five, I just click here, drag this up, and there you go. It's getting sent to channel five now. You can also see in this project, some of these sounds, they aren't getting sent anywhere. They have this blank value here. These are gonna get sent directly to the master. Now, if I wanted to, I could obviously send these wherever I want, or I could click on the sound, and I can hit track. And this will automatically get sent to the next available insert. So I'm gonna go back and send this hi-hat back to number four. And if I look at the insert here itself, you guys can see this meter up here shows the volume of our hi-hat playing. If I press this green little button down here, the sound gets muted. If I right click on this button, that's gonna allow us to solo and just hear this one specific insert. I should mention though, you guys will notice that the master is still turned on. Obviously, if we turn this off, we're not gonna hear anything because again, the master is what we actually hear from our speakers. But sometimes you might run into this issue where you might hear other sounds when you solo your one specific insert. And you guys remember from what I just showed you, the reason why is because all of these sounds that aren't being sent to individual specific inserts are being sent directly to the master. So we're gonna be able to hear every single one of these sounds as well. Therefore, it might be a good idea to actually send every single one of your sounds to a specific insert. Below the mute or solo button, we have this panning feature right below it with this dial here. Right below our panning dial, we have this feature here called reverse polarity. Most likely you're not gonna use this. This just allows you to flip your sound upside down. So the positives are now negatives. This might be something that you might wanna use if you run into phasing, but it's not gonna be a very common feature that you're gonna use every single time. The two features right underneath are also stereo shaping tools. Right here, we have the ability to swap the left and right channels. So what was in the left channel is gonna go right, what was in the right channel is gonna go left. And this dial right below it here, this is a pretty useful feature that's gonna let you control whether your sound's gonna be very narrow in the stereo field or very wide. If I turn this dial all the way to the right, our sound is gonna become a lot more narrow in the stereo field. Whereas if I turn it all the way left, It's gonna sound a lot more wide. So this dial is pretty useful if you're trying to get control of your stereo mix and have things sounding a little bit more clean and refined. Below this, we have our fader, which controls the overall output of our sound. Just click on top of this little fader here and drag it up and down. Or if you hold your mouse below or above the fader, you're gonna have a lot more of a smooth increase or decrease. Below this, we have a switch here that lets us turn on and off the effects that we have on our sound, which are all the way to the right here. I'm gonna cover this really shortly. Right below this, we have latency control, which again, you're probably not gonna use. This is useful for phasing, which you might not run into all the time. And below this, we have a recording feature, which is really useful. I'm gonna show you guys how to use this later on in the video as well. And then the little rope at the very bottom here, which I already told you guys about. And as you guys can see, we have the exact same insert over and over again for a maximum of 125 inserts. And on the very right side of this window, this is the area that we add our effects onto the insert that we have highlighted currently. The way to read this menu is from top to bottom. If you're just using the mixer to mix your beats, this top area right up here, this is probably not gonna be of much significance for you, so we can just leave that alone right now. Below this, we have 10 different slots here, and with these 10 slots, we can add 10 different effects onto our sound. And if you end up using all 10 slots, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick later on in the video that you can use to add more than 10 effects onto your sound. Now again, like I mentioned, this thing works from top to bottom, so the order that we add our effects onto our sound actually does matter. 
So if I wanted to add an EQ onto my sound, for example, what I would do is just click this little arrow right here and I'd go ahead and choose an EQ here. Your menu might look a little bit different. I organized mine, but nonetheless, this menu here is gonna show you all of your effects that you have at your disposal. And then after this, for example, let's say I added a reverb on top of my sound here. This reverb is now affecting our new sound after it's already had some of the frequencies cut using the EQ. If I went on and I added a compressor at the very bottom of this chain, for example, in the next slot here, I'm not just compressing the raw hi-hat here. What I'm actually doing is compressing the hi-hat after all of these effects have been added on after I added on my EQ as well as some reverb. So that big echo that's gonna get produced from a reverb, that's also gonna get compressed here. So again, be aware of the effects that you add on top of your sounds and the order that you add them on really does make a difference. Now this little dial to the right of our effect is gonna control the dry and wet setting. By default, every single effect that you add on top of your sound is gonna have a 100% setting. But let's say I take this reverb and I put it back to 50%. What I'm basically saying here is that whatever parameters that I set inside of this reverb, only 50% of it's actually gonna to apply to our sound. This is useful if you have an effect that's a little bit too drastic for your liking and you just wanna quickly peel it back. You can just go ahead and turn this dial down. So it's pretty useful for that. And again, this little green light here, this lets us either mute or solo an effect. Now, as I mentioned, the order that you add your effects on top really does matter. So if you wanted to rearrange some of these, what you could do is just float your mouse over top of your effect. Take your mouse wheel and just scroll it up and down. This will reorder whatever you have highlighted here. Or alternatively, if you don't have a mouse wheel, you can just go into the menu here and select move up or down. And in that same menu, you can also delete an effect if you don't want it anymore. Or we could go ahead and replace it with another effect. Below these slots here for our effects, we have this equalizer here that comes with every single insert. This EQ comes with three different bands that we can control using these little dials and faders here. Personally, I don't use this EQ that much just because it doesn't allow for a very specific control. So I'd rather just use a designated EQ up here. But you guys can hear if I solo my 808 here and I cut the low end here. Even if I have a bunch of effects up here that are meant to boost the 808, again, this reads from top to bottom. So this EQ is gonna be applied after all of these effects, so be wary of that. And down here we have latency control again, which you're probably not gonna use that often, as well as output control, which if you're just mixing your beats, you're probably not gonna use this either. All right, so we've covered the basics of how to use the mixer. Now what I wanna do is show you guys some useful tips and features that are in the mixer as well. If you have an insert and you wanna reset this back to the stock setting, what you need to do is right click on top of the meter here and click reset selected tracks to default. And now everything in this specific insert is gonna go back to the default settings. Another really useful feature that I actually use a lot if I have an insert that has an effects chain that I really like and I wanna apply it to another sound, what you can do is right click on top of the meter once again Go into file and you guys can see it has this little feature here called save mixer track state as. And what you wanna do is click your mouse and hold it down and then drag this into the insert that you wanna copy this into. So for example, if I drag this into insert four, now insert four is gonna have the exact same inserts as insert three. Now, if you didn't hold this down, if for example, you're back in here and you just click this, this is gonna allow you to save your effects chain. So for example, if you find you use the exact same effects on every single 808 in your beat, what you can do is just save the effects chain that you commonly go for. And then for the next project, you can just right click on here, go to file and then go to open, and then just select the chain that you saved prior. And you can do this exact same thing with specific effects. Instead of taking this entire chain, let's say for example, I just wanna take this hardcore effect. I can just click the drop down here, hold my mouse down on save preset as, drag it into an insert, and now this exact same effect with the exact settings that I had it set to is gonna be in this insert as well. Now in this exact same area that I showed you guys before, this also has a bunch of presets that you can use on top of your sound that FL Studio provides. So if you wanted a mono tape simulation, it's right here for you. If you find your project's getting a little bit too messy and you wanna do some organization, holding down Alt and pressing left and right will move this insert around. So you guys can see if I opened up my channel rack, and right now the hi-hat's getting sent to four, and I select four and hold down Alt and left and right, it automatically gets changed to wherever I move this insert. Or alternatively, you can just hold down Shift and use your mouse wheel, that does the exact same thing. And from here, if I organize this so my drums are all the exact same area, what I could do is just right click, change the color of all my drum sounds to be the exact same thing, I can group them together as well. Just small organization tips here. Now for that recording button that I talked about earlier, this is gonna be a very useful feature. You can use this to print out your sound into audio form. This is useful if you have a ton of CPU usage and you need to sort of peel back some of the effects that you're using. You can print this into audio form which will bake all of the effects onto your sound and then just reset the insert to free up some space. 
Or if you want to do some pretty heavy loop manipulation, this is also a very useful feature. So what you do is just click this little button down here, make sure this is red, go into the menu up here, select disk recording, hit render to wave files. And then from here, you can choose whether you want to render just that specific pattern that you're looking at or the entire song if you had it laid out in the playlist. So I'll select pattern for now. I'll hit start. And there you go, it automatically gets put into our channel rack here. Now we have a loop of our 808 pattern and we can do a bunch of things here like chop it up or change the pitch and just get pretty experimental with some manipulation. Or alternatively, if you just wanted audio of a very specific part of your loop, what you could do is go back into your insert, right click on the meter here and select either open audio editor or open audio logger. So what this is gonna do is record whatever you have playing in your insert so you guys can see. <laughs> This is the audio sample that I had playing in insert one. So now what I could do is just click this button here, drag it into the channel rack. And now same thing here, I have a little loop here and I can just experiment and isolate a specific sound that I like. And there you go. So these functions can be used in a bunch of different creative ways for different needs in your project. Now, as I showed you guys before, that little rope at the very bottom of our mixer, let's say for example, I run out of slots to use for my effects, they're completely full. What this little rope will allow me to do at the bottom here is routing. And like I mentioned before, every single sound in this insert is getting sent to our master and the master is actually what we hear in our speakers. Now this little dial down here, let's just control the volume of what we want to send to our master. So the way to use this to add some additional effects on top of our sound is to send this to an empty insert. So again, as of right now, this is completely full of effects and I have no more room to add any effects on top. And the audio from this insert is being sent to our master. But instead, if I just turn this dial all the way down, now all we get is silence because again, even though it's being sent to the master, the volume is all the way down, so we're not gonna hear anything. And as well, what I'm gonna do now is send this to an empty insert. So what I would do is just click this little area down here and whatever insert I currently have selected is gonna get sent here. So if I unmute this insert, you guys can hear we can hear our sound again. Now the reason why is because the audio from our old insert right here is being sent to the new insert right over here. You guys can see this one is being sent to the master, which explains why we can hear it again. And the good news is I have a whole nother 10 empty slots right here that I can use to add some more effects on top of my sound. And as I mentioned in an earlier video, this is a feature that you can use to really improve your beats in a very unique way. So check that video out if you haven't watched it already. Also, if you end up getting confused as to which tracks are being routed where and which ones are being received by which other inserts, what you can do is just right click on top of your meter here, hover over select, and you guys can see it gives you a bunch of different options here channels routed to this track, tracks this one is routed to, tracks are routed to this one. So you can use these features if you end up getting confused and you can't remember which tracks are getting routed where. And if you wanna route multiple inserts into one insert, let's say for example, you wanna do some drum busting, what you can do is select multiple inserts at once. The way to do this is hold down shift, control, and just select multiple inserts here. Or if they are all together, you can just hold down control and just drag your mouse over. And at this point, if I were to go down to this little area right down here, right click it, and select a route to this track. Now every single one of these inserts is being routed to that one specific insert. And there you go guys, those are the 21 essential tips on how to use the mixer. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I have a bunch of similar videos covering the piano roll and the playlist and other things like that. So check those out if you have trouble using FL Studio. Again, my free drum kit is available in the description box below and also join the Discord if you're interested in live beat reviews. And I'll see you guys next time.